love the name of Jesus. We worship you, God. Jesus, we give you praise today.
can smile in the storm. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. Even in the valley. You said it. I believe it. You said it. It is done. That's why I can lift my hands in worship. You church happy, happy new year. year here at victory outreach manchester we put god first with 21 days prayer and fasting we encourage you to get involved check out the website for more details we have many opportunities to build relationships with god and each other throughout the week we have prayer services and life groups details on the screen right now or head over to our website have something for everyone so check out our website viewmanchester.org.uk Hi guys we come to a really important segment of our service and it's giving and some people say why is it so important why do people talk about giving so much well one of the reasons why is because it is the gateway to so many of God's blessings. God is not transactional in this, but it does help us to do what it is he tells us to do. And he tells us that you will not reap a harvest if you haven't sown a seed. It's just not, not gonna happen. It doesn't happen in the world. You don't ever get a return for something you've never invested in. And we talk about sometimes sacrifice of giving. And it is a sacrifice. I don't know about you, 
but sometimes giving money anywhere to anyone at any time can feel like you're being killed, like you're a sacrifice. But I like to think of it more as an investment. That's the way that God really showed it to me throughout all of my years. And that's how myself and my wife and our family, that is how we give. We are investing of our substance back into our God as worship who gave it to us in the first place, who enabled us to make that wealth. And one thing I've, I've, I've come to understand, Psalm 37 verse 26 says this, I was once young, now I'm old, verse 25, yet never have I seen the righteous abandoned or their children begging for bread. And then he says, they are ever generous and quick to lend and their children are a blessing. I don't know about you, man, but I have never seen someone who invests into the kingdom of God with faith ever begging for bread, begging for food. I've never seen it. And uh, I doubt that in the West I ever will. Unless there's a war or there's some sort of mad disaster. I've never ever seen it. This year, 2023, I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge those that have never ever given regularly, consistently, and sacrificially to God, I want you to start this year. I want you to give it a month, give it two months, give it three months, and see if God does not bless you. And then those of you that already give, be consistent. Be consistent. Listen to the voice of God. See what he wants you to do. And then this year, it's going to be a year of abundance, it's going to be a year of blessing, you're not going to lack. So, 2023, let it be a new year of investment and a new year of harvest and abundance in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today that you have given us the ability to make wealth. You've given us the ability to, to earn. You've given us the ability, oh God, to do those things. And Lord, from what it is that you've given us, we take the first bit, we take it off the top, we take a portion of it and we sow it back to you. We invest it in, you, in your work, in your kingdom. We invest it in you, oh God. Bless it, multiply it, use it for the furtherance of your kingdom and then Lord, we know that in that we also will be blessed. We love you, Lord. We pray that this year is going to be the best year we've ever had. And we give you the glory for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your faithful giving. Here's a few ways that you can continue to give. You can give by visiting our website, vomanchester.org.uk and following the giving link. Click the donate button to give using your debit card or if you prefer to do a direct bank transfer, the details are on screen now. The first details are for your tithes and offerings, the second details are for you United We Can. You can also access the giving details by scanning the QR code on your screen right now. Use your mobile device to scan that code. For all international givers, please use the IBAN and BIC details.
church remember pledge 2022 for more information on the pledge and if you would like to pledge please head over to our website and for those who have pledged don't forget to honor your pledge Good morning, everyone, and I uh, just want to wish you a massive, massive, massive Happy New Year. Um, uh, as you've woken up this morning, it's a new calendar year that we find ourselves in, and my prayer for you is that you're not all shook up after last night, um, but that this year, this season that we're about to come into, would be the best one that we've ever had. I want us to pray, and then we're going to we're going to look into just a few things that I want us to, to focus on right now, today, that are going to benefit us, not just for the next week or the next month, but for the next 12 months and uh, even the rest of our lives. So help me to pray right now, right where you're at. Lord Jesus, we give you glory today. We thank you today that you have woken us up, that we have you in front of us, Lord, I pray today that your word would come alive to us, that you would speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak into our lives and lead us and guide us. Holy Spirit, we commit this day, this year into your hands. Lead us, comfort us, counsel us and give us the power of heaven that we can live in a way that brings glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. I... Um, I was thinking about this message for New Year's Day, and I was thinking about what do we do every single year? We, we normally look at the new year, and we take one day, and we, we start to make what we call resolutions, right? And I'm sure everyone's made a few resolutions in, in years gone by. But I was looking at it, and I was thinking, what can we do this year? What can we do this year that maybe is a little bit different? And so I've titled this message, Doing Things Differently. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to do all of the same things that I did last year. I want to do some of the things that were good, that worked, that brought glory to God. But there's also some things that maybe we need to just leave behind in that old place. There's a scripture that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. And we know this scripture and it's... I really believe that it's a brilliant one for us to look at on this day. It's Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15. You've read it many, many times, most of you. But I want us to look at it just for a minute. And then we're going to go into what it is I, I, I really want to communicate on this day to us. And he says this in verse 12. He says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. And I don't know about you, but that's something that we can all say amen to. I don't think any of us have reached the point where we can say, I'm perfect. There's nothing that we have got apart from our salvation that was perfected by Christ where we can say, I'm perfect. He says, but, and this is one of those biblical buts that, that really help us. Even though he has not reached the place of perfection yet, even though the, the time that was before him writing this letter to this, this church wasn't perfect yet, he says, but there's the hope of it. He says, I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. There's something about the relationship that Jesus Christ wants for us to have with us and him. That is perfect. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful place. And it doesn't matter how much failures we've had in the last season. It doesn't matter how many successes we've had in the last season. The only perfection that we can ever have is found in the presence of God. Then he says this. He says, 
No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. I focus on this one thing. Not thousands of things, not hundreds of things, not the, the things that shout the loudest. He says, I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. That's it. That's the big picture. That's the reason why we're alive. That's the reason why you've been born again if you're born again. And if you're not born again on this day, today is the day of salvation for you. You need Jesus to be your Lord, your King, your protector, your provider, your saviour, your forgiver. But Paul says this, he says, look, he says, there's something I'm pressing on for. It's not just to have a bigger bank account. It's not just to have a bigger house or a flashier car. Those things are nice. They're not, they're not, they're not horrible. They're not bad things. They're not, you know, there's nothing in the Bible. There's no scripture that says thou shalt not have nice things. But the one thing he's looking for is to finish the race, to fulfill his purpose, to find his meaning fulfilled in Christ. Then it finishes in verse 15, let all those who are spiritually mature agree on these things. I mean, if you agree on these things, lift up your hands right where you're at. That means you're mature if you lifted your hand. And then it says, if you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. We're not here to, to try and argue someone into a right way of thinking. We're not trying to judge someone who maybe doesn't think the way that this thinks. But what we're saying is, listen guys, this year, today, right now, we have some decisions that we can make that are going to help us to find fulfillment, find meaning, find peace and joy, and find that place of perfection with Christ this year. And it starts today. We, we, we look at today as the new year, the new year's day. And for us in the West, you know, it's, it's taken on a whole mantle. Of, of, of expectation, of things that are, are hoped for and, and many well-intentioned resolutions are made. I don't know about you, but I've made many resolutions in my time. But studies have shown, they've actually studied this academically and studies have shown that approximately 80% of all New Year's resolutions fail and they most don't even make it past the start of February. Check that out. So here we are, New Year's Eve, making resolutions. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to lose weight, get fit, I'm going to eat less chocolate, I'm going to you know, make more phone calls, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to work harder, swim longer, run harder. Whatever it is that the resolution that we make, and most of them fall to pieces before you even get out of this month. Why is that? Well... There's many reasons, and we're going to look at some of these ones that are going to help us to make different decisions. But, but I've got a question for you. Why don't we just do away with resolutions this year altogether? Why don't we just throw them in the bin, throw them in the trash, and say, I am not going to bother making these feeble resolutions that never ever go past February, that leave me feeling like a failure and feeling like I haven't succeeded. Why don't we just throw them away, and instead, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a little chunk of time today, this week, this month? You don't have to rush it. Why don't you take a little chunk of time and look back at the previous 12 months, 2021, and have a look, document, write down, get a piece of paper, get a book, and write down two columns. In one column, write down successes. And in the other column, Write down failures. So you can, uh, you can even say under success is achievements. And you can say under failures, things that didn't go to plan. Things that didn't go well. And then take some time and evaluate the last year. Have a look at it. Why, why am I saying to do that? Well, what I will guarantee you do is that you will see that there have been more achievements that you've had than you give yourself credit for, number one. So you can, you can be encouraged about that. I don't know about you, but this last year for me, it went in a blur. It, it was like, it was just like, it went like that, it was a blur. 2021 was a blur, man. 
You, and, and, and when I was doing this, I was thinking about, man, I can't even think back on some of this stuff. But when you start to think about it and write down the little stuff, even the small things, like you got out of bed one morning when you didn't want to get out of bed or you went to work or, you know, you graduated something or you started a new job or you made a new friend or you, 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 you earned this money, you did this, you did that. Whatever it is, you got your essay in. Whatever it is, write those things down. They're things that you achieve, man. And then write down some of the things. Be honest. Some of the places that you didn't quite, it didn't quite work out the way you wanted it to work out. And when you've done that, when you've been honest and you've been a bit diligent, you've taken your time and you've done this as an exercise, have a look at the year ahead and then decide what needs focus and energy and what you'd like to change by the end of the year. Simple, right? So what you're doing is, you're looking at, instead of making a, a general resolution, I want to lose weight, or I want to get fit, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. Look at some of the areas of your life that maybe fell short of what it is that you've wanted in the past year, and then focus on those things. Because the thing is, they're, they're all joined up, all this stuff's joined up. And then look at the achievements, man, because then you can get encouragement that you can actually achieve some stuff. I'm telling you, if you do this, it's going to help you out. And I'll tell you why. Why do things fall out of bed before February, mostly, with resolutions? Because people make these, have these big dreams and no plans. They have a big dream and no strategy. They have a thing that they want, but they don't put anything into place to make sure that that big dream becomes a reality. Remember that... Everything, everything revolves around your relationship with God. This whole season, this Christmas season, right, is about the coming of Emmanuel, God with us. And God desires relationship with us. He wants us to be with him. He wants us to focus on him. He wants us to represent him. And he wants us to do it with joy. And he wants, to do, wants us to do it with power. So instead of focusing on some of the stuff, and here's another thing, instead of focusing on some of the stuff that makes us look good, feel good, why don't we focus on the things that make God feel pleased, that, that God wants us to do? And then in that, when you start to focus on the main thing, then all of these other things start coming towards your life anyway. So I've written seven things I'm going to give you right now, seven key things. To help give you some sort of plan, keep you on track, so that you can crush some of those things that really matter to you this year. Are you ready? Number one, be specific. The problem most, most people have is they have too many goals. Because if everything's important, nothing's important. You get scattered, you get distracted. Concentrate on the things that matter. And then do your best to put God first in your thinking and your planning because I guarantee you find that when you do that, you'll come into a place that really matters. The presence of God. And when you're in the presence of God, God will begin to show you what it is he wants you to focus on. Be specific, especially this year, 2023, be specific with your relationship with God. Number two, make a plan. Make a plan. Put some time into planning some stuff. Plan out your diet. Plan out some tra training. Plan out your Bible study. Plan out some prayer time. Plan out your giving. Plan out the times you're going to come to church. Plan out what services you're going to come to. The Wednesday service, the Sunday services. You're going to go to a small group. You're going to get involved in prayer or you're going to get involved in something else. Don't forget, you've got your kids. You've got to plan that in. Don't forget, you've got some time to plan in for studies. You've got some time to plan in for a date night. Hello, you've got some time to plan in for a little pamper day every now and again. I know that all of us need a little pamper day every now and again. 
little manny and petty and little facial, whatever it is. But if you don't plan it, it will never happen. And if you don't plan it and you try and make it happen, well, you know, things that are unplanned very well generally don't end up very well. Start by analysing the past year, as we've said. And then as you do that, you're going to be really surprised how a plan will begin to form for this new one. Number three, start small. All of us, when we came out of our mother's womb, we didn't start off the size that we are. And all the mums can say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen for that. But we start small. Everything that God births starts small and then it grows. God knows that we have a certain capacity and he wants us to grow over time, grow our capacity, grow our ability. He wants us to take small steps. Never forget that big doors move on small hinges. Start taking small steps. If you're taking baby steps, if you're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 50 press-ups a day, but you're, you're, you're doing them on your knees, you're just trying to, whatever, start small, man. If you start, I wanna run, start walking first. Start small and build, it's okay. Everything good, healthy starts small in that way. The germ of an idea, the genesis of an idea that then can grow. And things can grow and speed up according to the speed of your obedience in doing what God wants you to do and how you fulfill that plan. Zechariah chapter four, verse 10 reminds us to not despise the small beginnings. And as you continue to be consistent, you let the momentum build as you consistently keep making progress in the right direction. Number four, do things differently. Avoid repeating your past failures. If you, if you take time to do the exercise I said and you start looking at some of the failures, why? Start looking at why did you fail? Was it because you, 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 you failed to plan? Was it because you tried to run ahead? Was it because you weren't consistent? What was it? And then avoid making that same mistake. Doing the same things in the same way gets the same results. I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. But why do we do it? Don't be mad. Learn to shift gears when it's necessary to do so. You know, sometimes people want to stay in the same gear all the time. But there's no point being in sixth gear if you come to a roundabout and you're either going to crash or you're going to stall. You need to change down gears. And so you need to do things differently at different times to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Change gears. Make some different decisions. Do things differently. Avoid repeating your past failures and mistakes. Number five, keep going. Keep going, man. Keep going past February. Keep going through March. Keep going into April. Keep going into May, June, July, through the summer. Keep going, keep pressing, keep pushing, keep going. Stop treating life like a sprint. It's not a sprint, man, it's a marathon. It takes time to grow. It takes time to mature. It takes time to expand. It takes time to put some things in place. It's okay. And God, God, God's master of time. God can speed things up. God can accelerate things in a moment. And the more consistent you are and the more obedient you are, the more God will give you. Because to whom has much more will be given and to whom has nothing, all of it will be taken away. In other words, it accelerates positively, life accelerates negatively. If you're on a downward slope, if you're doing wrong, all of that all of a sudden just comes unstuck in a moment. But there comes a point when you're doing right, you're doing what God wants you to do and boom, you get a breakthrough, you get an acceleration. Don't be afraid. Keep going, keep going. Remember that change is a process. Change is a process. Don't try to rush this year what God is working out for you. Keep going, because eventually you're gonna get right to the point where God's been waiting to release something into your life. Number six, 
Don't go it alone. Don't try and do it on your own, man. Get support. And no one can tell me that there ain't no support. People have got support. There's support out there. There's support available. There's support for us. In God's church, there's support. But sometimes we act like the dog and not the master. Sometimes we want our lives to be patted on the back all the time. We want, to, want, to, want our belly rubbed. We want to be taken out for a walk and get a treat all the time. But I don't know about you. I don't want to be the, 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 the tail. I want to be the head. I don't want to be someone that is always needing someone else to come and support me. But there comes a point where everyone needs some support. Sometimes it's to keep you on track. Sometimes it's to keep you accountable. Sometimes it's to tell you that you're doing well. Even I need that. In fact, I probably need it more than most people. But there's also times when I want people to tell me, shut up, you shouldn't have said that. What's the matter with you? We need people around us. Look at what the, the wise man wrote all those years ago in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. He said, two people are better off than one. For they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. I remember one time we were out walking our dog, me and Vicky, and I went through a season, man, where I would fall over all the time. I fell down three hills. I've fallen into a river. I've slipped down a mountain. I've, I've done all sorts of stuff, man. I would walk along and I'll be gone. But thankfully, I wasn't there on my own. I've fallen down the stairs innumerable times. Thankfully, I wasn't laying there all mangled on my own. There was someone there that was going to help me up. Sometimes it was literally physically helping me up after I'd really injured myself. And sometimes it was just Vicky laughing, and mocking, laughing at me and mocking me that made me get up as quick as I could. But the fact is this, if you fall alone, who's there for you? And sometimes we have to understand it's always better to be insulated than it is to be isolated. He says this, he says, Likewise, two people lying close together can keep, keep each other warm, which, you know, in the, the last heating crisis, you know, that might be a good thing. Hallelujah. But then he says, how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. That's something I want to see more of this year. I want to see more of God's people standing back to back. I want to see more and more of God's people not facing each other, arguing, not spitting bars at each other, not spitting curses at each other, not walking away from each other, but standing back to back, facing the enemy together, making sure that you are taking care of your brother and your brother or your sister is taking care of you. If we do that, the enemy has no place. It says three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And that goes back to always keeping the main thing, the main thing, that we belong to Christ. You belong to Christ. He is with you. He loves you more than you could ever know. He wants to be with you. God wants a human family and he wants you to be part of it. And he will be right there. Don't push him out. Don't keep him outside. Don't lock him out. Bring him in this year. Keep him in this year. Get some help. It is true that sometimes there's nobody to help, but it's so it's as rare as hen's teeth, someone said. You've either missed the offer, or maybe you don't really want help, because that might stop your ability to moan and complain. But the fact is, don't do it alone. Last one, number seven. Renew your motives. Why do you do what you do? Why, why did you join a church? Why did you become part of that ministry you're in? Why do you get up out of bed to come to... Why? 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 Is it just because it's socially acceptable? Is it because you fear not doing it? Or is it because the Word of God tells you 
That this is essential for his people, that we should gather together in community. Because it's in community that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's in community that we sharpen each other. It's in community that we can encourage each other. It's in, ex in community that we exalt each other to greater things. It's in community that we can lay hands on the sick and see them get well. It's in community where we can give and invest in God's will and God's work. So renew your motives, renew your why, relook at your why, and get inspiration for this. Because really, that's where it's all at. You don't have motivation if you've lost sight of your motive. When you're getting up and going for a run in the morning, when you're not eating that second bar of chocolate, when you're not, when you're not opening that fridge, when you're not doing that thing, and then you, you start to think, why, why, why am I doing this? You lose your motivation to do those things because you've lost your motive. Your motive was you wanted to run a marathon for Run for Hope this year. Your motive was that you wanted to be healthier and get rid of diabetes this year. Your motive was that you want to be part of a community stronger and make more friends this year. Your motive was the, the why that got you doing that thing in the first place, of crushing those goals in the first place. But God wants to inspire you. That word inspiration means God breathed. It means God breathed. The Scriptures of God are God breathe. He wants to inspire you, fill you with his passion, fill you with his power. Decent dictionary definition of the meaning of inspiration is twofold. The first one is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. I don't know about you, but let's not stay with the same stale old stuff. Let's start innovating this year. Let's be more creative about some of the stuff we do this year. Some of you need to get a little side hustle this year. You ain't making enough money from your job. Start selling something on the internet. Start doing some advertising. Start doing something else. Start baking some cakes. Come up with some stuff. Sell some clothes. Be inspired. Bring solutions. Be creative. And then the second Definition of inspiration is the drawing in of breath, inhalation. And sometimes we've got to stop and we've got to take a deep breath. In the context of the scriptures, the word inspiration simply means God breathed. And that means that if you want to be truly motivated for 2023... If you want to achieve some stuff this year, if you want to crush some goals, if you want to be in the place where you have no regret at the end of this year, if the, at the end of 2023, <coughs> you draw up another sheet of achievements and failures, that the achievement side is going to be so huge and the failure side is going to be so small, that you can look back and you can say, you know what? It's been a good year. And the thing is this, lastly, with all that in mind, guys, 2023, wherever you're at, whoever you are, make it your supreme goal to know God personally, fully. For some of you, that means that you need to come back to him. For others of you, it means that you need to go to the next place. There's a new mountain waiting for you, new vision. Whatever it means for you, make him the center. Make him the all in all. Make him the first and the last. Make Jesus the center of it all. Keep your eyes fixed on him, the author of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He went through his stuff, despising the shame of it. And now he's got his reward. Seated at the right hand of the Father, having finished his work. I don't know about you. 2023, I, I, I want to give it 100%. No holding back, no withdrawing, no hiding. No burying of talents. 
We've been through too much. We've survived too much. We've overcome too much. This is the year that we see the harvest. This is the year that we open up those wells again. This is the year of the living water in your life. This is the year. I want to pray for you right now. Right where you're at, take a moment. Let the kettle boil, do what you got to do. Focus on God right now. Lord, I pray for every man, woman, and child that is watching and listening to this message. I pray that in this moment of this day, in this year, that there would be a turning, a redigging, a renewing, a refashioning, a reshaping, a revival that begins to be released. Lord, I pray that we would do things differently now. Not that everything in the past was bad, but it was just in the past. And it's to the future we look. And it begins right now. That we make the decisions today to press in for the higher calling, the upward calling, the greater things, the bigger blessings, the deeper relationship that you have for us, oh God. If there there are people that are listening or watching right now and you have never ever given your allegiance in life to the King, immortal and eternal, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son, same in being as God the Father and God the Spirit, divine, unique. If you have never ever made Him your Saviour and your Lord right now, Do it. Do it. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I need you. Forgive me. Help me. Heal me. Be with me. Never let me go. Teach me to be like you. Thank you, Jesus. If that's you, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to contact someone. Tell them, listen, I want to know what to do next. There's things that you can do. There's different things that are going to be on the screen and um, on, on, on different places on social media for you to connect with. Also, I just want to pray right now a blessing over every household for 2023. Because there's power in blessing. And this is a year I want to bless like I've never blessed before. I want to be a blessing like I've never been, been a blessing before. How about you? So right now, just lift up your hands right where you're at. Come on, lift up your hands. Sign of surrender. It's a sign of receptivity. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, you see these hands, these hearts, these lives, these homes. You know what's gone before. You know what's been overcome. You know what's been left behind. You know what still lingers. Lord, I pray that there would be a severing of every unholy thing. That there would be a severing of guilt and shame. That there would be a healing of everything that brings pain. And that there would be a blessing from heaven to your people. Bless every house. Bless every home. Bless every family, every individual. Bless your people, O God. May this be a year of victory. May this be a year of expansion. May this be a year of acceleration. May this be a year of spiritual fulfillment. Lord, we give you the glory for that. We know that you hear our prayers through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, turn around to someone next to you and say it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. So guys, Happy New Year. And I hope you have a great day, a great week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Don't forget, 
We're back in person next week. We want to see you. Come out. Come out. Come and join in. This is going to be an amazing year. God is doing some stuff. He's up to some things. It is going to blow your mind. So God bless you. We love you. Victory Outreach Manchester. Happy New Year. And God bless you. Yeah.